am I going? What's that rattling? So thirsty. How long? Whew. The sun is so hot. Day four. I have to say, that is a good looking rock. Day 53. <laughs> I'd rather Where not going? get another scorpion sting <laughs> to the behind. Day 412. I know I've seen that cactus before. How much longer? Ugh, the vultures are back. Day 932. Will it ever end? Desert seasons. Am I right? <laughs> Trying and uncomfortable, yet also beautiful and purposeful though at times seeming as if they'll never end. Well, today I'm gonna paint a desert scene on a mini canvas while we talk about three pain points we face during desert seasons and how we can find comfort in God amidst them to persevere through. Let's go! What is a desert season, you may ask? Well, it's a time in your life when you feel a little lost or directionless, a time of waiting for answers from God. You may feel stuck and not sure which way to go, and doors seem to keep closing all around you. They can be seasons of feeling lonely, while you face various temptations and trials. And there are two main types of desert seasons. Ones that we put ourselves into because of our own actions, and then those where God has intentionally brought us. The Israelites, for example, after they left Egypt. They literally could have avoided the entire wilderness experience if they had remained obedient to trust God and enter the land He had given to them. But they didn't, and the Lord honored their choice, which led them to 40 years in the wilderness. In contrast, we see Jesus led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness for 40 days of testing before starting His ministry. With either case, God is with us, and he uses these seasons to bring goodness into our lives and to shape our character. So if he uses them for good, why are desert seasons so hard? Let's look at point number one, the uncertainty. One of the hardest parts of desert seasons is the uncertainty, not knowing how long it is going to last, not knowing when or how the Lord will answer your prayer, not understanding where you're headed, why you are there and the purpose of it. For the most part, we tend to be creatures who love to know and understand things. We think, if I could just know where all this is headed, then I would be able to handle it without freaking out and be obedient to trust you, God. But if we don't feel like God is giving us that understanding, well, we tend to go and analyze and try to make sense of it for ourselves. And the striving to make sense of an uncertain situation is exhausting, and it steals our joy. When I find my thoughts quickly falling down the rabbit hole of analysis, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 rescues me out of it. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make straight your paths. Letting go of the need to understand everything is very freeing, and it leaves room for us to discover what it is God is actually trying to do in and through us here and now. We may want all the answers to our future, and for our desert seasons to end ASAP, but God wants us to trust Him and be present in what He's doing today. When we get so fixated on one thing, we miss out on the hidden treasures of each day spent with Him, as well as the opportunities to be a blessing to others and even receive blessings we may not even have been looking for. A practical tip to help when you find yourself expending all your energy trying to figure out your life is to whip out a journal and write down at least one thing you see God working on right now. This will help to be present with the Lord in this season. And doing this over and over helps to chip away at that uncertainty as you focus on the things you are certain God is already doing. Pain point number two, the silence. Sometimes in desert seasons of life, God can feel silent, as if he is nowhere to be found. We feel like we are crying out day and night only to receive our own faint echoes as a response. But what is true is not determined by our feelings. In Matthew 28, 20, Jesus says these final words to his disciples, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Knowing this, along with knowing that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, we can look beyond the silence and loneliness we may be experiencing and instead draw near to God knowing He is there, regardless if we are hearing an immediate response or not. I have another video that goes more in depth on feeling alone, so I'll go ahead and throw that link up if you want to check it out. 
I think it's important to note too that sometimes the silence may just be an unwillingness to hear him. Maybe we're not ready to accept that his answer may not be what we want and are struggling to believe that his way really is what is best for us. Or perhaps we feel him impressing something so crazy and out of our comfort zone that we just brush it off and think that can't have been from the Lord. Examining our own hearts and asking God to soften our hearts to his voice is a really valuable practice and helps us to be clear about what God is or isn't saying. And in reality, God is never truly silent, as he has already spoken to us in his word. Meditating on it reminds us of his nearness and comfort, It holds his wisdom and guidance for how to approach life. And it may just be that this season is all about cultivating closeness with him and learning to really be still and allow him to speak to you through his word. I want to share these two verses with you, as they have been so important to me in my own seasons of waiting in silence. The first is Psalm 37, 7. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself over the one who prospers in his way, over the man who carries out evil devices. And the second is Psalm 62, 5. For God alone, O my soul, wait in silence, for my hope is from him. Even if you feel like God isn't around, keep drawing near to him, leaning on what is true over what you feel. When we embrace the silence with a heart posture of humility and trust, and are patient to really wait in quietness before him, We find that the Lord has so much to say to us, and in ways that we never would have expected. Pain point number three, the heat. The desert is hot, hot and dry, and can even be dangerous if you're not careful. And metaphorically, a desert season is also hot as we face the fires of refinement. In times of testing and trial, we are pressed on all sides which tends to push us to act out in frustration and impatience, selfishness and despair. When metals go through a refining process, the extreme heat brings the impurities to the surface and then they are scraped away. So it is with our faith. Day after day, after week, after month, after year and beyond, enduring a desert season can push us to our breaking point. But just as the refining process results in beautiful and strong materials, when we embrace the uncomfortableness of it in our lives, we come out stronger and more radiant than before. 1 Peter 1, 6-7 reminds us of this. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And again in James 1, 2-3, we are encouraged to endure, as he says, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. Shifting our perspective to see our desert seasons and trials as a time to grow and deepen our faith and relationship with God is the key to enduring through and actually facing it with joy. The refinement may feel discouraging, as it exposes the darkness in our own hearts. But when we humbly accept it and bring it to God, we know that He isn't bringing it to the surface to shame us in any way, but rather is doing a good work in us, helping us to become the best versions of ourselves. And little by little, we begin to reflect Him more and more in the way that we handle our situations and treat those around us with the same grace and mercy He has given to us. One more passage I want to share with you comes from Isaiah 43:18 through 19. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. He is preparing us for something on the other side of the wilderness, making a way where it seems there is no way, changing parts of our own hearts that seem too stubborn to shift, and deepening our faith and relationship with Him. While we trust Him to do this, we can take steps to grow closer with Him by leaning into His Word, being vulnerable with Him in prayer, and enjoying the patience of being still before Him as we wait, 
I also really encourage you to come alongside others who may be in a similar place so you can lift one another up with encouragement. As we persevere with faith, we begin to see him in the simplest moments and find joy that surpasses all understanding. And in time, we'll find there is truly so much life in the desert. To all of you who may be in that wilderness season right now, I just want you to know that I am praying for you. And I hope this video could encourage you today to keep pressing forward and leaning into God. I really had fun painting this cacti trio while meditating on these verses today. In what creative ways do you draw near to God in difficult times? I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. And also feel free to share any verses that have helped you so that we can all read them and be encouraged by each other. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. This has been KO here with you to create eternal perspective. And scene!